Epic Artists. Uh, today we're going to be making this coffee mug from a slab of clay. So you would have picked up from Epic um, a piece of cardboard that's wrapped in newspaper that has a slab on it. It should be wrapped in plastic. And then a paper bag that has inside of it some underglazes. and a fork, a popsicle stick, a paintbrush, and a piece of paper. That's your template for your mug. So to get started, not all, um, you may want to cover your workspace with either brown paper or newspaper so that it doesn't stick. And also, the mug's a little bit bigger sometimes than this piece, so sometimes it's easier to work on the table. You also need some water and a sponge or a piece of paper towel. So if you look closely at your slab, you're going to see a little bit of texture in there. And that texture is just from the slab roller. It's the canvas imprint on there. So if you like that, it's fine. Um, if you want to smooth it out, you can also do that. The easiest way is probably with your sponge or your paper towel. Just wring it out so it's barely wet and just slowly go over the clay. You can do both sides if you want or just one side, depending on kind of how detailed you want it to be, um, how much time you want to spend on this project. For most projects, it doesn't really matter how wet or dry the clay is. You can usually figure out how to make it. Um, but this project, the clay needs to be a little bit drier, kind of not leather hard, but not squishy. And I'll kind of show you later if you're running into problems where you might just need to walk away and let your clay dry for a little bit. But we want to make sure that when we're smoothing it out, we're not adding too much moisture back. That's why I'm wringing out my sponge all of the way. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is cut out our mug template. And... I'm going to do it down here so that I have this section left later for the handle and for the bottom. So kind of get it as close to one side as you can so that you have room. And then you're going to take your popsicle stick, hold it straight, and just use that to cut along the edge. Hold it like this and kind of pull it. It should create a pretty clean edge. You don't want to hold it too much as an angle in or out because then you will have um, not a straight angle on the bottom. So I'm going to set this to the side. Probably won't need these little scraps. And this is what you should have to work with. If you see any big bumps in there that you want to smooth out, go for it. If your edges are a little rough, you can smooth it out, but you can also do that again later. So I'm going to go back to working on my cardboard just because it's easier to turn it on here. So you're going to take your mug and you're going to join it together. Now this mug may look a little bit bigger than this one, and that's because clay shrinks a lot as it dries and then as it's fired in the kiln twice. And so it's really important to, to make things bigger so that you're not bummed out with a really small mug at the end, unless you only want a couple drops of coffee. So if you've taken a class before, worked with clay, you know that any time that clay meets, you have to scratch to attach. 
So we're going to be doing a lot of scratching to attaching in this project. So I'm going to scratch the edge here and scratch the edge here. And you really want to scratch. If you just do kind of a light pass over this, the clay, instead of joining together, is not going to join. And when you fire it or when it's drying, it will pop open. So you really want to attach it. Now we're gonna bring it together and use our popsicle stick to smooth it. And we're gonna do this on the inside and the outside. So we really want to bring it together. on the top, on the inside. It may even be a good idea just to pause the video and spend some time really doing this. And I'm bringing this clay kind of over. That kind of seals that seam up. So if you look at this, it's really hard to see where the seam is. We want it to look like it's one piece. You can take your finger, get it a little bit wet, kind of come in there, smooth it out, flip it over, smooth out this side, make sure I got the bottom. But it should look like one continuous cylinder. You shouldn't be able to see that seam too much or have it sticking out. So that is where you want to be. Okay, so for the next step, we're gonna bring in the bottom a little. You don't have to do this. You could cut a circle and attach it to the bottom for a straight up and down cylinder. You would just place this on here and cut around it, and then you'd scratch to attach that on the bottom and join it. That would be totally fine if you want a straight up and down mug. This one has a little bit more shape to it, and so I'll show you how to do that um, in case you want to have kind of that square bottom, has a square, and have it go in a little bit, be tapered. So to cut, you're gonna use your popsicle stick. Again, you may need to clean it off if there's any clay on there. And I don't like to do a corner where I have my seam. Um, for this one, you probably can't see it on video, but it's right here. So I have it right in the middle of one of the sides. So I'm gonna do that again. And then I'm gonna just kind of square the bottom a little bit. So kind of bring those in. I'm just gonna make a little bit of a mark where my corners are. Okay, after you do that, we're gonna cut these out of the clay. And you want them all to be about the same size. So that's just a little V. And this is where it's easier to have it on the cardboard because instead of picking it up, you can just kind of turn it around to keep working on it. But you're gonna do that on all four sides. Trying to make them about the same size. I'm going pretty fast for the purposes of this video, but it's okay to slow down, take your time. Um, if you want to take one of your V's, and the first one you do, and then hold it up as a template for the other ones, that works good. I'm just picking out some of those little clay balls that happen when you're cutting clay, just to make sure that I don't have any sharp pieces later on when this gets fired. I'm gonna take my fork, I'm gonna get it a little bit wet, and remember, we have to scratch to attach. So I'm gonna scratch that V. I'm gonna scratch all my Vs, and then I'm gonna bend them in together. Again, I'm getting it a little bit wet because my clay is harder so that it stands up. If your clay is wet, it's not gonna stand up, it's gonna kind of flop, or it's gonna feel like you can't work on it. If that's your issue, you may just have to leave it out. Um, try maybe 20 minutes of leaving it out and see if it's dry. Um, if it's really wet, which it shouldn't be, um, I try not to send you 
one with super wet slabs, then you could, you know, put a fan on it or leave it in the sun. You don't want it too dry or it won't bend. Okay, so then we're gonna take our V's and we're gonna bend them in to make that square. And I'm just gonna kind of bend them all in first to make sure that I got my shape right. And then I'll come back and join them with the popsicle stick. So this is just a little bit of fun trial and error, bending those in. Take my popsicle stick. It's up to you if you want to have kind of a seam. Um, you can also kind of just bend it down without having that sharp corner. Either way is totally fine. And just a combination of getting my popsicle stick wet, using my finger, smoothing this out. You really want to take your time to do this so it doesn't pop open. And I'm going to go inside and do it too. Since this is a coffee mug, you're going to see the inside. So you do want to have nice smooth seams and the bottom. So you have a nice bottom. And it, you may need to just kind of re-bend it to get your square shape back. So once you have the bottom, the shape you want, then we're gonna flip it over onto our piece of clay. And I'm just, um, you're gonna need some clay for your handle. I know that my bottom is, you know, maybe gonna be like this big. So I'm just gonna cut right here, set this aside for my handle for a minute later. Okay, and then we're gonna flip this over I'm actually going to use the end of my paintbrush. I'm just going to draw a line of where that goes. It doesn't have to be exact. We can trim it again after we cut it off. So then I'm going to take this and just kind of make like this. And then I'm going to see how it fits. Oh, so one of my sides is a little bit off. Or maybe it's this way. I'm going to trim this up a little bit. There, that feels better. Okay, and then same thing, scratch to attach. So take your fork on the inside here. You're going to scratch a lot. I usually go both ways. So you kind of want hatch marks all the way around. And then on the edge of your slab where it's going to meet. Go the other way. This is not something to skip. you're going to set that on there. Then, ah, I had a little friend on there. You're gonna take your popsicle stick and you're just gonna blend this together. And soften some of the edges if you want. Grab off some of that extra clay that's maybe hanging on there. You wanna blend those edges together. I would say it's worth your time to kind of maybe smooth out the bottom too, just so you don't scratch your end table or anything when you set it down. Just have a nice smooth bottom. And while it's upside down, it's a good time to sign your name. So I'm going to write epic and I'm just using um, the end of my paintbrush. Flip that back over. If you look in the middle, you can see that it's not joined there. And so now I need to take my popsicle stick and join the clay. 
again, spend some time just bringing that clay together, just working it so it overlaps. And if it looks messy, you can take your sponge, get all the clay out, and just kind of smooth it out so that it looks a little bit more finished. So I noticed that my seam, it's not popping all the way, but I can see it more just from bending the clay so much. So I'm going to just make sure that my seam is secured again, um, just using my popsicle stick. I don't want that to break. And you can kind of recircle the top. It might be a little bit out of whack. If it's sharp at all, take your paper towel or your sponge and just smooth it out because any little piece of clay that's left will be sharp after it's fired and if you're drinking out of it, it could hurt your lip. So you just wanna smooth that up. So you can leave it like this if you just want a cup or a pencil holder or a toothbrush holder. You don't have to put a handle on it, but I will show you how to do a handle. So we're gonna make a handle out of slab that will look kind of like this. So I'm gonna take it, and this is a little bit of trial and error. We're gonna just, it looks a little thick. Cut. It's better to do it too long and you can trim it off, but we want something that will kind of be like this. So when I look at that, that is too big, so I'm going to trim some off the bottom, try it again, looks a little better, still maybe a little long. Let's see. Yeah, that looks good. So you guessed it, we're going to scratch to attach. Scratch this. So I usually scratch my handle first, get it nice and wet with the fork, and then hold it where I want it to be. And that should leave little um, slip imprints on there, and you can scratch that so that you know where your handle goes. If your handle feels like it's not going to hold up on its own, um, you can let it dry a little bit and attach it later. But we're going to take our popsicle stick and blend this together. Lots of scratching to attaching in here. And you really want to do a good job at this because you don't want your handle to fall off. If it feels like it's not grabbing real good, you can even add a little piece of clay. So let me show you this. So you can take, kind of make a little section, stick that up top, kind of press that in to help hold it together. Something like that. So my handle is a little bit flimsy, so I'm just going to take my sponge. You could roll up some newspaper stick it under there to make sure that it stays the shape that I want it to be. So you should have something like this. So we are done with clay. So you can go ahead and collect that all together and put it back in the plastic bag that it came in because we can reclaim that and use it at Epic. And then now is your time to underglaze. So you can do it right now you can let it dry a little bit more and then do it. You are not going to want to pick up this mug by the handle until it dries all the way because the handle um, can pop off when it hasn't been fired. And so hold it by the big part if you need to move it. If your handle looks like it's kind of sharp, make sure that you clean that up with your sponge too. You can do something like I did here where I just made a design of flowers. You could write number one mom if it's a gift or I love you grandma and sign it um, with your siblings names. You could make a unicorn on there, anything that you want. These are underglazes and they can go on wet clay. For the mug you'll have um, blue, pink, yellow, green, and black. 
And so those will be the colors that you have to choose from. Um, either whatever you want to do to design your mug is fine. After you paint on it, um, you will bring it back to Epic and then I will fire it and then put a clear glaze on it. And that clear glaze will allow you to put it in the dishwasher, microwave, anything like that. So under glazes um, can be a little bit streaky. We recommend two coats if you want it to be solid. So you're just gonna paint on there. Like let's say for this one, I want the rim to be blue. You can paint inside the mug if you want. You can paint outside. Under glazes, you can even go on the bottom if you wanna you know, make a big heart and sign your name in underglaze. It's totally fine, but you'll want to put it thick or do it once, wait for it to dry, and then put a second coat on. So you're just going to use your paintbrush, clean it off when you're done with each color, and then let's see. You can put right on there. If it seems a little bit thick, um, for writing letters. I'll turn this around in a minute so you can see it. You can use, ugh, I think I have some clay stuck on there. You can use the end of your paintbrush to draw with it. It just takes a little bit more time, but it will create a thinner line. And you know what, if you have paintbrushes at home that you wanna use, that's totally fine too but you can write letters on there however you want. The most important part of this project is to just take your time and scratch to attach really well. So when you're all the way done, you will cover this up with plastic so that it dries. And I would say as soon as the underglaze is dry, go ahead and cover it with plastic. So the plastic bag that the clay came in, you can just put it over the top or if you have a trash bag or something, but you'll want to cover that. Put your underglazes and tools back in here. Even if there's just a little bit left, we will use it. So we'd love to have those back. Your fork, your popsicle stick, your paintbrush, your template. Stick those all back into the bag. Any clay that you have left will go in that plastic bag. We want that back as well. Cover it up, bring it back to Epic, and we'll fire it. There will also be in your bag, it's not one in here, but a sheet that looks like this. So fill this out with your name, parent's name, email, how you want us to get a hold of you, the name or initials that you put on the bottom. So sometimes people like to sign their names, other times they just put initials. Either way is fine. Special instructions like if your favorite color is purple and there's no purple in there, you could say please um, glaze my handle purple and I would take care of that. And then anything else you wanna make and if it's okay to take a picture of yours and share it on social media. So um, thank you for doing the mug project. Let me know if you have any questions and enjoy.